you drive it, you just feel absolutely that one with the road. Uh, and there's nothing to waste. It's the, just about the lightest car on sale today. And um, that's the way I like it. I don't like heavy cars. It's a 2003 Lotus Elise. I fell in love with Lotuses first and the Elise second many, many years ago. Uh, my brother ordered one of the very first Mark I Elises. I've always bought into uh, the Lotus ethos as defined by Colin Chapman of making things simple, light, uh, focused. The Elise was designed by his spiritual successors and it's such a lovely, efficient car. Uh, that electric blue paint is just fantastic and it's so neat and tight and focused. I know when a friend saw my brother's Lotus in my garage many years ago. He didn't know much about cars, but he said, is that a Ferrari, he said. I disabused him, but <laughs> um, it looks like a real proper fast car. Certainly when I uh, borrowed my brother's Elise, the only thing I thought it lacked was power. But having bought one with the Turbotechnic supercharger in it, doubling the horsepower. Uh, it, it's enough for me. It did actually take me about 18 months before I was driving it rather than it was driving me. I, I use the car for a variety of things. It's increasingly been used as a track day car because I love doing track days. I've beefed up the electronics by upgrading the electronic control unit so I can run different maps for different conditions, uh, which is great fun apart from anything else if you're a geek, which I am. Um, and uh, by adding decent track day tyres, that was the biggest revelation really. Uh, we have uh, put fancy wheels on it, uh, which are Oz, Oz wheels. And again, being a fairly thoroughgoing geek, I've actually constructed a homemade tire warmer to look after them in the cold winter nights so they don't get too cold. Uh, but uh, I, I think A, they look fantastic, and B, they make such a difference to where the car runs. It's currently running at, uh, it's officially 230 horsepower. Yeah, on the rolling road I took it to about nine months ago, it was 225. The noise the car makes, well, it's always a battle because if you want to do track days, you have to meet noise limits. Um, but on the other hand, there's no doubt that a proper supercharged engine in full cry is a, a truly wondrous sound. Uh, so I personally think I've got it about right. It's loud enough and rich enough that uh, it's great, uh, but it meets all the track day regulations. The only thing I don't like about the Elise is the amount of time that I've spent not having it. Really, um, it's had various niggling reliability problems and it's had a couple of major events like blowing up the engine and blowing the head gasket. What advice would I give to somebody buying a Lotus Elise? I would say if you set out to buy it entirely with your head, you'll probably fail horribly. Uh, it's something you buy with your heart as much as your head. And frankly, I think the, the current generation of Lotuses with their Toyota engines are wonderful cars, but they lack some of the inspiration factor of the older ones. Is there anything I would replace it with? Well, like my son, I'm beginning to fall deeply in love with the new Porsche Cayman GT4. I think that sounds rather special. And that might just be a contender, but I can't see much.